that kind of nerd let's start the show with comics movies and technology here we go bringing you the segments that you're looking for like cape talk screen to stream tech perspective and more cast this nerd degree and the blockbuster welcome to the club because you're that kind of Welcome, everybody, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show where we break down all the nerdy news in the nerdy world. I am Brian Thornton, and I am joined by Joshua Burns. What up? Uh, no CJ. It's the, the Burstons. Burstons. Huh. It's the Burstons. Burstons in the house. C- CJ somewhere in Floridia? Uh, somewhere in Floridia, I believe he is actually uh, getting an Uber copter um currently <laughs> you know possibly wearing a sleek suit who knows i don't know who wait 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 who'd he get to pay for the uber copter because you know damn well it wasn't him <laughs> oh yeah he's so cheap no it's not like the it's not like the industrial model he's getting like one of the whatever the puddle jumper version of a helicopter the is Tyco, my first uber copter you know like the umbrella copter that like penguin uses <laughs> that's what he's getting He's flying around Mary Poppins style with the kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's just got them all strung together just in case one of them lets go for a little second. Daisy it's, chained. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's got those leashes. You know those leashes that you see kids with in the theme parks? Maybe he's, he's got, got like on a, his entire family. Maybe he's got like a like a Mark II gauntlet and he's just electrified all their arms. That would that would be even better. So I they can't I, let I mean, go. Because that science checks out. Iron Man 3 told me so. <laughs> That's right. So uh, how, how have you been doing? What's uh, what's going on in your nerdy world, Josh? I got to tell you, uh, there was a there was a uh, there was a situation, a situation, situation that occurred. Um, it was last night, two nights ago. I am uh, like, you know, my my umpteenth rewatch through Daredevil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm like I, I did. I did Daredevil seasons one and two. I skipped Jessica Jones because I don't need to watch it again. And then I skipped. Um, uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, because who cares? And and I moved on to Defenders because uh, I, mm. I need to get to Punisher. Well, yeah, and Daredevil uh, and Defenders is Daredevil season two point five. That's right, so, right. Punisher, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Defenders is Daredevil anyway. Um, but I need to get to Punisher and then and then Daredevil and Punisher, and I, I got to go through all that stuff. Anyway, mm-hmm. I'm uh, sitting in the living room watching it with Laura, and she's you know whatever she's doing, playing Candy Crush or whatever shit she does in her phone. Um, and I'm, I'm watching season two and she starts trashing Karen page. She's like, Oh, Why? she's an awful actress. And I went, no, she's Deborah not. Ann- no, no, Laura. She's absolutely not. She's like, why does she keep touching her hair? I said, well, uh, when a female does that, it, it, it could be flirtatious. It could convey vul- vulnerability or insecurity. Like, there's a lot of different like things that can be left unsaid just just with a little you know what I mean yeah, uh, a yeah. little a little I mean I am not a female but I have touched my hair flirtatiously once uh, in a while yeah sure but like yeah. I mean you you know this the particular actress like think back to True Blood it was the yep. same same thing right same same sort that's kind of her move right yeah 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 um and I thought she was wonderful in Dare I mean wonderful in Dare oh Devil. she's she's definitely. Amazing, and, and then and then it, it, you know we're we're going on and and we're still I'm still watching, um, the scene in that little Indian restaurant with all the chili pepper lights that are so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And Laura's like, the chemistry between them sucks, and I went, you need to shut your mouth. Is this Laura's first time? She has. She doesn't watch Daredevil. She's got to watch the first season. That, and, that, and that's kind of what I said. I'm like, look, I, I've watched this straight through, I don't know, four, five, six. I'm not even sure how many times. But yeah. like, I, have, I have all these scenes memorized. I have them uh, burned into my heart, and I love them so much. And she's just sitting four feet away from me, trashing this thing that I love so much. Oh, my gosh. What and it's like, and it's not just, and, and then it, it's not just, at that point, it's not just Karen Page. She starts trashing Matt Murdock. And I went, nope, no, nope, nope. That's it. There's no more talking <laughs> while I'm watching this show. Um, you know, thank Christ there was no Rosario Dawson because I'm not sure I could handle that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because she'd have trashed her too. And uh, no, that's not allowed ever. I, I'm just uh, flabbergasted. I, I trust Laura's taste in, uh, in media. She's got great taste in media most of the time, but like, and, and like she's, I feel like she needs to watch the first season. She's never going to do she, it. Like, she like jumped onto a moving train and uh, like then wants to complain that the caboose is not red. You know, like right, right. So, oh, I I'm on this train and all they have are finger sandwiches. I I wanted wings. Well, right. They, but you didn't look at the menu before you jumped on the train. You got to Like you got to get into. You it. took you, my analogy into a much better place. You got to start from the ground floor, right? Exactly. And, and I yes. think I think when you when you. Listeners, I think when you get to know Karen Page from episode one and see the vulnerability and see how she grows and see the story arc and see how she and Matt and Foggy interact together, it's it's really something very special. And that like that was kind of my other point was that they were they were all friends like it, like so this this chemistry thing, this is a new thing. It's not. It's it's not something that 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 uh, developed over the course of you know multiple years. This just kind of happened, and before that, they were pals. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite shows of the past decade. I like I for someone to to take one look at one episode mm-hmm. and say that's not a good actor. This chemistry is wrong or it doesn't work. I'm over here like. You shut your mouth. That's right. not like that's not even a thing. You don't have any you don't have any basis to say that. True. Very true. Um, yeah, I. Well, I would like to start a petition to uh, have Laura watch the first season of Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, it's only 13 hours of her time. I'm sure she can carve out some time in between. You know, it's not even they're, the only, they're, they're only things she does. They're only like 50 minutes long. So, I mean, yeah. It's you know it's maybe it's it's maybe closer to like eleven hours. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Next time you guys go to the shore, just you know, just bring an Apple TV with you. And, I, and I always bring it. an Apple TV with me down well, I mean, the shore because yeah, you're smart. I mean, <laughs> I do it too. What would I? What would I do without my Apple TV? What I have to? I have to hook up my 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 MacBook to the TV like a peasant. Funny story. Um, last time I went to the shore, the 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 house that we go to doesn't have internet. But I brought my Apple TV anyway. I know, right? What? Your brain. I get it. Yeah. So I brought my Apple TV anyway. Uh, Game of Thrones was on. Were you was, in a cave? Uh, I was not in a cave. I was in a, a house in Ocean City. And um, so I hotspotted my phone so we could stream some stuff, you know, at night. Cause How does the Apple TV hook up to your... Does, is, it, is it reliable? Yeah. Oh. Watch an watch entire episode of Game of Thrones and like three or four episodes of the Goldbergs. Like, fine. No problem. Killed my data. Yo, but yeah. I have unlimited data with like fifteen. Yeah, uh, but you only get like fifteen of, gigs of streaming. Of, of yeah, and, yeah, and like fifteen gigs of hotspot in, in particular. Right. right, right. So that data ran out, and we were like, "Well, we're not tired. What do we do?" There was a VHS player. I found VHSs, and we watched an old VHS. Oh, they always have VCRs. Yeah, but I wa- I'm watching this movie on VHS. I'm like, I can't believe that. We thought this was the best picture could get. Did you? I'm watching it. And I'm like, this is horribly looking. Did you be kind and rewind? Of course, I always be of, kind and of rewind. Of course, you did that. My, what, my, what, 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 v, what, what VHS did you watch? Heartbreakers. Really? Yeah, yeah. Is that it's Patrick, one of her favorites. Patrick, not uh, uh, Gene Hackman, Scorny Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes. Yes, it was like a reverse Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. It it, it was. But yeah, not, not, like, this, not, not this not this Melissa McCarthy one. shit. Yes. yes. Yes, it was like that. I remember Jennifer Love Hewitt and Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver, uh, she had legs that went all the way to the floor in that movie. Yes, yes. Yeah, as she does, yes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, that's my story about always bring an <laughs> Apple TV when you go to the shore. <laughs> I do. I always bring an Apple TV. And I generally um, bring a gaming system. Uh, it's usually a PS4. It will not be this year. I think I will bring uh, both the NES and the SNES Classics. I am so glad you mentioned that because I did something this week uh, that affected my nerdy life as well. 
Um, so we've been talking about the PlayStation Classic for months and months and months. Dog shit. Yep. It was hundred dollars, and it dropped and it dropped and it drops. And this week I was like, I was shopping for Father's Day gifts, and I was like, oh, you know what? Let me let me see just how much it is. Picked it up, got delivered to me this week. Thirty bucks. Oh. Totally worth it, even if the aspect ratio is screwed. Thirty it, bucks. Even is... if the aspect ratio is screwed, I got it for thirty bucks. It's hooked up, and I was able to play Super Puzzle Fighter Two Turbo. <laughs> and I, I got news for you: it was everything that I wanted Super Puzzle Fighter Two Turbo to be. Does it have? Does it have siphon filter? It does. I'm gonna have to buy it. Where'd has you get siphon it? filter? Has Metal Gear Solid? You can go on Amazon right now. You can purchase it for for, for thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, buying it. Yeah. Um, I don't have the dollar sign to you know edit that in, so you know I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't get that, but hey, another moment where we purchase something over the net. I'll, uh, I'll let you. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. PlayStation um, Classic? Yep, PlayStation Classic. This says Pet For You True Blue Mini Pack for PlayStation Classic Crackhead Pack 64 gigabytes. I don't know what you're looking at, <laughs> but let me just go into my past orders and I'll send you the link. Yeah, please do, because this is, oh, this is to add more games to it. Oh no, you can't. You can't do that. You gotta. You're gonna have to break it somehow. Like yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, you oh, don't want to do wait, that. Holy shit! Look at this. It's a hundred games, dude. Yeah, and what do you have to do to the classic to actually do it? It's no. It's like a flash drive. It looks like you just plug it in. Ah. Uh, like it's ready to go, and it's got. I'm sending you this link. You got to see this. Yeah. Since, since we're since me. we're talking about it, you got look at the list of these games. You're going to love this. Maybe we'll both be purchasing something over. It's got all the Tomb Raiders. Oh, it's got Tony Hawk. Mm, done. Where Where are you plugging this into, though? Isn't there Oh, a- you're plugging it into the classic? Yeah, yeah. It looks like you just upload direct. Wait, what? I Maybe even... Because there's a USB port on the back, right? Yeah. So, like... So, maybe you just... Maybe you don't even need to upload these things onto the the system it looks like you might be able to select them and play them directly from the from the drive from the stick what is what is the difference between the packs i'm about to look 101 of the best ps1 games included well the fight pack only has 58 but the the mint the the meth pack and the crackhead pack. oh the oh i gotta get i might have to get them both because the the meth pack has tony hawk three and four and the crackhead pack only has one and two and the meth pack doesn't have any of the Tomb Raiders, oh. but it's got like NBA Live, NBA Jam, NBA Hang Time. Crackhead pack has Parappa the Rapper. That's a that's my jam. It's got the Die Hard trilogy. It's got Vagrant Story. It's got Batman I'm and Robin. So it's got it's got Goth- Gotham City Racer. I am so glad you Googled the wrong thing. Yeah, I totally did. Jet Moto, all all three Jet Motos. I just I want to know how it works before I actually hit. No, I'm with you, uh, and 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 probably requires a little bit more. Oh, hold on, wait. Oh, wait. So you can get all three for sixty nine, right? And, and that's, then you'd have to buy the the, the classic, the, the meth pack, the crackhead pack, and the fight pack, right? Which has all the battle arena games. It has, oh my God, it has all the Knockout Kings games, all the Mortal Kombat oh, games, all, okay. the, all the Street Fighter games, all, uh, Tekken's one through three, and all the X-Men games. Like, how okay. can I not buy all three of these? So, so for $100, for the original price of the PlayStation Classic, I can get the PlayStation Classic, and I can get an additional 300 games. Right. For a hundred bucks, which for, is what the PlayStation Classic was originally selling for. Right. Like, why wouldn't <laughs> I just do that? I, I'm looking at uh, some of the, the facts. And, and the first thing is, is it's just a simple plug and play. And so what you do is you take the stick, you plug it into the back of the PlayStation where the power plug usually goes in. And then you plug the power plug into this USB stick so it still gets the power. Can you daisy chain all three, I wonder? Or do you have to switch them out? I doubt you can daisy chain them. Okay. I, I'm well, sure it doesn't you're going to have to switch them out. I'm buying all of this right now. It's that purchased. Is, it's that purchased. is interesting. It will be at my... Oh, Jesus. Well, the... So I'll have the um, the PlayStation Classic in a couple days, but I won't have the other stuff 
until somewhere in like mid July. All right. Well, I'm glad we talked about this um, <laughs> and I am minimizing that window. And I will say this. Uh, we will definitely keep you all apprised, listeners, about our uh, ex- ex- experience with our 300 games. But in the meantime, cha-ching, cha-ching. Um, so, I mean, while we're doing a little like just talking a little bit of follow up, I do want to uh, touch on a couple of things um, about two three weeks ago. CJ and I spoke about a life-size R2-D2 that you could buy at Galaxy's Edge for $25,000, to which we both asked, who, who is buying this? Who actually has this kind of money? And I'm sure, Josh, you would agree. <laughs> well, yeah, but surely someone has that kind of money. Three people have bought it already. Holy shit. $25,000 a piece. Three people have bought it already. And it's completely built from the ground up just for you, I guess. Um, I don't know who these people are. I do not have any uh, information on them besides the fact that just three of them sold, which I just think is freaking crazy. And that's all I want to say about that. I can, There's a whole lot of things I can do with $25,000. And I love Star Wars. I can think of better ways to spend that money. I mean... <sighs> You know, it, it's uh, twenty five thousand dollars buy you a a pretty bitchin' audio video system. Yeah. Um, a down payment on a fantastic house or car. Yeah. Down payment on a house, a car. It's I, that I can put that in an account and get interest and send my kid to college on it. Like twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> it's like an R two, like an R two model, not likely to appreciate a ton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially like, here's the thing: if the starting price is twenty five thousand dollars, you can't go up from there. You you just go down. <laughs> yeah, it's only getting worse. <laughs> I, I I don't even know if the actual like script for a new hope that they auctioned off like six years ago went for twenty five thousand dollars. Like insane. It's insane, and That's three insane. people have bought it. I. I am beside myself. I take all of my negative comments back from two weeks ago. Apparently, people have the money to buy this. But more importantly, why didn't they just give that money to me? I would have done much better with it. It's the same people that have, like, a chrome-finished Lamborghini. They drive around Philadelphia. (laughs) Like, it's just, I mean, all you're doing is ruining it. Yeah, 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 really. If you're driving a mirror-finished Lamborghini around Philadelphia, you're just ruining the car in general. You know what? I do want to talk about one other uh, find that does appreciate. Christian uh, and Zoe and Laura, uh, they volunteered at the school's uh, yard sale. Um, nice. And, or, yeah, I didn't like, know they did yard sales anymore. I thought it was like, just called yeah. eBay. No, like a garage sale type thing to raise money for the school. And it's okay. it's usually pretty crappy. But like, what, so what I said to Christian was, um, look, if you if you see any comic books or whatever, like, you know, buy some because they're going to be yeah. cheap, right? Um, but like my Father's Day gift, I didn't even tell you about this. So mm. um, I got a I got a bunch of gifts um, from Laura and from the kids, um, and I got I got a, I got a Letter Kenny shirt that I absolutely love. Um, uh, the back says four check, back check, paycheck. It's fucking amazing. Um, the I got I got a, I got a Yankees polo, which is amazing. I got I swear to God, and I cried. I got a shirt from the kids that says, I love you 3000. I think I saw that shirt at Comic-Con. That's awesome. Like I, I opened it and I immediately started crying. Oh, it was amazing. That was amazing. Like Zoe got me, um, a baseball, but instead of the standard stitching, it's, Mm. it's a heart stitch and she signed it, which is very cool. And then Christian got 16 packs of, mixed sports cards for four for four dollars okay and like so he and i are going through and sorting them and what i'm finding is uh there's some there's some pretty valuable shit in here like yeah i I, i'm looking at it like i like there was there was one bag that in it had five um like 1987 george brett cards and george brett's a hall of famer now it may maybe those cards are only worth a dollar two bucks a piece but like he paid four bucks and those five cards, right, are worth more than that. Like 
And I'm looking at him going, you got amazing value, dude. This is really, yeah. this is really good. So like, I haven't even gotten through all of it, but that's awesome. Yeah. So like, at, while we're talking about like finding value in, in strange places, not buying an R2 thing for $25,000, <laughs> but like, you know, the, the PlayStation thing, like mm. this is, this is a very similar thing that just happened. And like, I'm, I'm like just the just the enjoyment of sitting with Christian and sorting these cards and going, oh, look at this guy, this is awesome, and but pr- pretty great. Yeah, absolutely. I always had a, I always dreamed of the day that I would be at like a yard sale, garage sale, and I would just buy a box of comic books and I would find like the first appearance of Spider Man, look, and, a like, Submariner like number one, like, yeah, like something crazy like that. <laughs> right. It's never gonna happen now that's that not, these things that's, are like that's not true. Eh. Now that these things are more in the limelight, people kind of know what they have. People don't know what they have. The the people that have these stashed away in their garages, they have no idea what they have. Well, then I will keep my fingers crossed for one day. I will find that that illustrious, elusive yard sale that I will buy a box of comic books from for five dollars. That's where I got my my. um, It's like a near mint web of Spider Man number one. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not worth it's not worth a ton, but it's a great issue. It is. It is a great issue. A very iconic cover. Right. Um, so, I mean, also in, in kind of as we're kind of following up on a couple different things here, I finally watched a couple DC uh, animated movies that I've been meaning to watch. I watched uh, Reign of Superman, which did you see the Reign of the Superman? I think you did. Reign of the Superman. That one. Yeah. No, yeah. I have not. Oh, my gosh. But you watched Death of Superman, the animated version. Yeah. This is the follow up. And it was solid. And I kept thinking to myself, why couldn't they just take this 70 minute movie and the death of Superman 70 minute movie, combine them to make a two and a half hour movie and give me a good live action Superman movie? <laughs> because it was so good because you're trying to apply logic to a studio. I it was it was so well done. I was like. The death of Superman, um, not only the comic, but the animated flick was fantastic. Yeah. And this this just kind of built on top of that. And the, yeah, they didn't follow the storyline exactly in the comic book. I'm OK with that. But they hit like a couple of beats and they made it very. I was invested. Like the, 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 he's fighting Cyborg Superman at the end of this. I'm like, hit him. Just do it. <laughs> like it was great. And then I also watched Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. How was which, that? Uh, <clears throat> fun. It was a lot of fun. Was it really? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of really cool choreography as far as like the fight scenes go. Batman fights Shredder like three times, and it's like everything that I've always wanted as a boy forever. Like he, it was very well done. Very, very just. It was fun. It was. It was something that you can, you know, sit and watch with Christian probably. Like. Okay, because it, it, it's got the turtles in it. Like it, it wasn't a ton of, it wasn't like dark and brooding. But I mean, there was some like you know violence here and there. There was no smooching. I know how Christian feels about that. That's right. Um, but you know the the standard superhero violence. There's you know a, a curse word here and there. That's fine. That's it. it highly enjoyable. Shredder and Ra's al Ghul trying to, you know, use the TCRI mutagen to, you know, take over Gotham and so on. Just a, a very fun movie. And what was really cool is at the end of it, during the credits, they took classic Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book covers and crossed them over. So, like, you had, like, that first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where they're all on the rooftop and Batman standing with them. And, yep. you know, vice versa for, like, they had, like, a, a famous Dark Knight Returns cover with Michelangelo on the cover and things like that. Which That was a lot of co- really cool, too. That so is cool. So I, uh, I watched some movies. I'm, I'm slowly working through the list. I'm caught up on Flash and Supergirl and Legends. I just need to get caught up on Arrow yet. Um, so we're getting there. I... But- I, I I'm I'm proud of myself. I'm not getting and, the Doctor and, Who just and, yet. And you but I'm should proud. be. You're you're getting there. Um the last stuff I watched on DC Universe, um I watched uh Justice League, the Flashpoint Paradox. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which was, which was very good. So good. Um I watched uh Assault on Arkham, which is you know, twenty fourteen. Yeah. Uh, that that and, was uh, that was decent. That was decent. And I watched uh Mask of the Phantasm, which was like early nineties. Not great. I love that movie. Don't it's, don't it's, disparage that uh, movie, sir. It's, well, look, in terms of like 
where the Batman animated universe has has come to from from where it was in like ninety three when Mask of the Phantasm was made. Mm. It's a, it's it's quite a big difference. Like no, I mean it definitely has grown, but that movie is still. I mean, a com- solid compare movie. compare Bad Blood. Oh, I like Mask of the Phantasm better than Bad Blood. Shut your mouth. I'm I'm sorry, I do. You could have picked any other Batman animated feature. Batman Ninja. I still listen. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is like one of my favorite Batman movies. Not well, just it's animated. Like a, it's like a classic cartoon, right? It is, and and there's d- d- there's definitely nostalgia that plays in that. I remember seeing that movie in the theater. It was one. It was the only animated feature at that time. Like that was a TV show that they put in the theater. Right. And I saw that with my dad and brother. Like there's a lot of nostalgia feels that goes into that, but also like. I, I think the story is amazing. I think the animation is, is yeah, fantastic. I, I love that entire series. It's good, but like if I'm comparing like the Dark Knight Returns, it was 2012. That was amazing. Under the Red Hood was 2010. That was uh, like that might be my favorite one. I'll give you that one. Yeah, um, I definitely will give you that one. Mask of the Phantasm was just like for me, it's like watching Batman on Scooby Doo. You know what I mean? Like it's. I wouldn't go that far, but I, I do know what you mean. Yeah, that's what uh, that's all I'm saying. It's 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 like it's almost silly. OK. All right. Um, I, I will give you that. I, I don't want to spend an hour and a half arguing with you about it because <laughs> we actually got a lot of show to get to. Do um, we? We do. I, I don't know about you, but it was a good news week for the nerd kingdom. Um, and we're going to start with the topic that I know the most about. So it's going to take the longest. We're going to start with Cape Talk. Cape Talk. So, Josh. Yeah. Um, you you are a, a man of the of the Twitter sphere, right? Uh, yeah, to a degree. Yeah. You 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 know of the Twitters, and 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 you definitely tweet more than I do. I, I'm on you there. Can, yeah. You can sometimes get your your thoughts yeah. into. I've got, 140 I've got a couple characters. hundred followers. It's nothing big. It's you know. Yeah, yeah I got like three. It's fine. <laughs> oh my um, god. I don't use it. I don't use it at all. But what I will say is. Uh, if you are on the Twitters and you followed Marvel, uh, Marvel Comics, not Marvel movies, um, you might have seen some very cryptic pictures over the week, starting with the number four spelled out in some webbing. Webbing means Spider-Man, obviously. Yeah, obviously. And the uh, editor in chief of Marvel is like, you're never going to guess this. You won't see this coming. You saw this picture was the number four and everybody's like, what does this mean? And the gut reaction was, oh, well, Marvel Comics is bringing back the Fantastic Four comic. Maybe they're doing a big crossover with Spider-Man. Wouldn't that be cool? And then somebody else was like, hey, what if this number four means that they're going to do a comic book adaptation of the never shot Sam Raimi Spider-Man four? And everybody was like, that would be amazing because we had a script for it. They just never shot it. Um, and all and the rumor mill just continued to go and go and grow and grow. And then the next day they tweeted out the number three. And that kind of ruined ever all of those theories. So they're counting down. They were counting down to something. Why did they start with four? I don't know. Last time I saw, I checked when you count down, you start with 10, but or five or five, five's or acceptable. Five, five four, three, two, four. one. Or Which, for or three, made some people salty when they found out that the the big news the announcement was that they just signed JJ J. Abrams to co-write uh, a Marvel comic Spider-Man run. Uh he's co-writing it with and you would think I would have this up right in front of me. What is that his kid? His kid. I can't remember. I can't find his name. Henry. Henry. Yeah. So he's teaming up with his son Henry to do a new comic book Spider-Man franchise. And everybody was like, okay. People were more excited by the idea of, of seeing a, a, a comic book adapta- adaptation of Spider-Man four. And as much as I do love JJ Abrams, I, I don't know. I, if you I don't heard me grumbling, uh, that was not my stomach. That was me proper. Um, Why are you grumbling, sir? Here, here's, here's the thing. Like, I, I think one-offs like this should be reserved for dudes like Todd McFarlane, mm-hmm. uh, who wrote the, the most brilliant 
Spider-Man storyline, in my opinion, that I've ever read. It was it was the best art. It was great marketing with the different covers, bag editions, what have you. I, I have all of them, all the variants. I've I've got all of them, and and the storyline. It's just my favorite ever. So I don't really like. I I get it, but here's the problem. J.J. Abrams is going to get compared to Todd McFarlane. J.J. Abrams is going to get compared to a lot of very talented comic book writers. And now that I don't think he can do it, here's my thing is he's co-writing it. So exactly how, how involved is he is really my first thing. Secondly, we're talking about a five-issue miniseries. So, okay, like... Marvel is making the, the the hype machine that we built around this was making it seem like it was much bigger than a five issue miniseries. And it's going to be Miles Morales. Uh, no, it's not going to be Miles Morales. It's they're they're going to be writing. Sarah Pacelli uh, is going to be drawing. She is the co-creator of Miles Morales. Uh, she was the artist on but Ultimate it, Spider-Man. But it's going to be Peter Parker. It, it's from what we can tell here so far. It is Peter Parker. Uh, they have five really issues released. isn't enough. Five issues, and that's it. Starting releasing in September. Um, They haven't really released a a ton of other information. Uh, We'll probably be getting a a first cover soon, probably at San Diego Comic-Con. Also, I'm not crazy about the art. I mean, Pacelli, she's definitely got a a specific style. I like her. Um, I don't know. I got to see some of it in action. I'm just, I'm so used to seeing her draw Miles and that world and, she didn't really delve too much into the the Peter and stuff. And 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 Miles so. is a, is a little bit like he's. <clears throat> you expect him to be a little bit more free form, a mm-hmm. little bit more raw. Yep. Right. And, um, and that's kind of the art style she brings to that. That that is the art style. And if you look at this cover, I'm looking at going. Well, that's not that's not my Spider Man. Like, who is that? Yeah, it's well, we will see. I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is the uh, the the backlash has been kind of funny um i'm gonna have to buy them i mean there's no question well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely buy buying them. them but everybody's just like oh the, the, okay this is this you made this a way bigger deal than it actually was and it, I, and i'm not taking anything away from marvel it is a big deal they got a they got a triple a screenwriter who is you know has been helming Dude, like anytime you movies. get jj abrams and the the money and power of bad robot that he has behind him yeah it's a huge deal it's a huge deal it's yeah. a big deal. He's a giant name in uh, American entertainment. Um, the fact that he's co-writing with his kid is kind of fucking awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that it gets to be Spider-Man, not some si- side guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Not like we're going. We're gonna. We're gonna let you into the the world with Nighthawk. Like, yeah, you no, can write. Get- gre- yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get one of our biggest characters right off the gate. I mean, that that's awesome. It's a great. It's a big I'm, deal. I, so the thing I'm most excited to see is what villain they write in. Yes, I'm interested to see that as well. We'll find out starting in September, which is only a few months away. Um, but you know what else is a big deal, Josh? What's a big deal, Brian? Doing something, anything, in my opinion, besides you know sleeping or pooping 200 times. <laughs> But, I mean, would you not agree that that is a big deal? Doing something two hundred times like that, doing things to yeah, but like okay, so you're saying that it's a given that you're going to sleep and poop two hundred times, correct? Yes, but doing other things two hundred times, doing other things deal. like for example, this gentleman who is apparently is a huge Marvel fan wants to break a world record. I'm guessing that he's just made up in his mind because I don't know of any world record that he's going to watch Avengers Endgame two hundred times. Before it's out, before it's out of theaters, not like I'm going to buy it on DVD. I'm going to watch it 200 times while I play on my phone in, you know, the living room. He's going to the theater 200 times to see this movie. That's pretty, it's pretty impressive considering it's a three hour movie. Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, okay. So just quick, just quick math here. Yes. Give me the quick math. Uh, it's like 66 days since the movie released. Mm-hmm. Now, the guy's going to get lucky because of the re-release, but like, does it say how many times he's seen it so far? 
I think as of this article, he had already reached a uh, hundred, over a hundred, and um, in I know sixty-six that's... days. I- yep, he's seen it a hundred times. Yeah. So, he, and in fact, in order to meet his goal, he's drawn out a schedule for himself. Um, if he, in this interview, he talks about on weekdays he's going twice a day, Saturday and Sunday, the most he can fit in is five, and then wait, five, <laughs> five on a Saturday or su- and Sunday. Not but combined, five apiece. So that's 10 times over Saturday and Sunday, twice a day over five days during the week. So that's a total of 20 times that he's seeing it a week, and he's already reached above 100. So he's either independently wealthy or fully unemployed. I'm not sure what Living his Living in his parents' is. basement. Oh, I, I don't know. Eating stale Cheetos. But... He is doing this for a purpose. He does have a reason. Okay, what's his reason? His reason is, is saying he, he wants to share a message that you can accomplish anything with the, the right dedication and discipline. So his quote is, if someone can have the dedication and discipline to do something small like this, imagine what we can reach, what we can achieve if we all have the discipline to help out each other, to love each other. That's his reasoning behind okay. doing this. Uh, and, 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 and fine. But like... But, like, saying I'm going to sit on my ass for something like two, 460 hours versus we should all love each other and help each other. All right. I, like, I get his message. I, I understand he's saying I'm committing to sit in a chair for 460 hours and eat a bunch of popcorn. I understand what he's saying. I would imagine he he has real food every uh, once in a while. He's okay, got to. That's well, if he's watching a movie five times, he's just eating the nachos at the stand. Like, there's no way he's leaving. Maybe he gets a hot dog if the theater has hot dogs. He's but he's not. I mean, those it, movie theater hot dogs are pretty good. <laughs> I got a real I got a real issue with somebody saying, "Imagine if you can accomplish something like this, dude." You're watching a movie. You haven't accomplished anything. I don't care how many times you watch that movie. That's not an accomplishment. That's just something you did to entertain yourself. Like, I mean, I I, I do think that the message of if I have a goal, I can I, achieve that goal I, is I under, worth. I, I, no, I get that. I, I really do understand the message of setting a goal and achieving the goal. Mm-hmm. I just think the bar is set so low here mm-hmm. that it's really not. A, look, I, I don't, I don't volunteer often. Okay, it's it's you know once every few months, but when I do, I pick the dirtiest job I can find, and I roll up my fucking sleeves, and I go do the job, and I help people. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying, you know what I'm good at watching Daredevil. You are good at that. You should all be glad that I'm watching all this Daredevil. Well, Josh, if you have the dedication to watch Daredevil while your wife critiques it <laughs> for many hours, imagine the things we could accomplish as a society. I, look, I get it. And, I, and I, think, I think the message is good. I just think it's misdirected. And I think it's not quite the right tone based on his actions. But... If we could all set goals and achieve them and love each other, then yes, the world would be a better place. Him watching Avengers 200 times, not achieving that goal. I, I do, I, I do have, uh, I do agree. I'm, I'm not going to fight you on this. But to your point, he is going to have some help because the, uh, the Avengers movie is being re-released with new footage. Which means I have to go see it again. Which means I have to go see it at least twice. Like, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we were, this is. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it just post credit scenes? Nope. It is seven minutes of actual. So there's two articles you're, you're going to be looking at. Okay. One is, hey, we've added a post credit scene. And one is, we've actually have new Shit. footage in the movie. Shit. I'm going to be in that theater for three and a half hours. Um. And it's going to be re-released July 20... I'm sorry, not July. June 28th. That is th- as of this recording, this Friday. And I got to tell you, man, this is genius 
genius oh, move. It's brilliant marketing, uh, it, and it's also going to require uh, sushi and a cocktail prior to going to see it. Absolutely. And here's the deal. They did. They must have done this on purpose because I'll give you the example of Captain Marvel and Avengers. Captain Marvel got released in the beginning of March, and literally a month and a half later, Avengers Endgame got released. And the big worry was that, well, Captain Marvel, yeah. money-wise, is just going to completely fizzle out once Avengers comes out. And that's not what happened. In fact, Captain Marvel started declining at the box office, and then when Avengers came out, people started going to see them both in the theater, and Captain Marvel was like number three at the box office that week. And I've been holding out hope. I don't know if you all know, listeners. <laughs> I've been holding out hope that Avengers will beat Avatar in worldwide box office gross. I think I might have mentioned it sometimes. This is how you do it. It's not... There's, I've seen so many articles. It's not just a greedy cash grab because I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think it was going to get an influx of new views in the theater just based on the fact that Spider-Man comes out on July 2nd. But reinvigorating the box office with, hey, not only are you going to go see it again because Spider-Man's coming out, but you're going to see new footage. It's going to bring some people who probably weren't going to go again back into the theater just to see what the new footage is. This is amazing for me in my life and it's amazing for the box office and uh suck at avatar. And do you think it's just the one, do you think they just get the one week out of it? I I think they're going to get, I think they're going to get at least two weeks out of it. I think you get the week leading up to Spider-Man. I think you get a little trail over into the Spider-Man opening. People that decide to go see Avengers instead of Spider-Man a second time. That or people who decide I'm going to I'm going to go see Avengers on Thursday and then go see uh, Amazing or Spider-Man Far From Home on Friday. Yeah. yeah. And also think about it this way. We're we're going to a holiday week. Fourth of July is that week. People have three day weeks. They're they're off. Yeah, I'm I'm taking a few days off. Yeah. So, I mean, people are going to have the time to say, hey, I can go see a three hour movie one day and then I'm going to go see Spider-Man because here's the other genius part of this, Josh. Captain Marvel just came out on Blu-ray. So I have one week with Captain Marvel on Blu-ray. Just? On physical copy. You've had it digitally for two weeks. I've had it for weeks, yeah. It just came out physically on Blu-ray, which not everybody has a digital library. But more importantly, the marketing, the advertising machine is in full swing for Captain Marvel because own your copy on Blu-ray. You walk into a Walmart, Target, you walk into a Best Buy, you have a giant Captain Marvel display front and center. So that's already in my head as far as, hey, I should pick up Captain Marvel. And now, the week after, I'm going to get Avengers Endgame re-release. Oh, well, you know what I'm going to do, Josh? I'm going to watch Captain Marvel at home, and then I'm going to go see the news, the re-release of Avengers Endgame. And then the week after that, or actually four days after get that, I get the next movie in the series. So it's going to be like, hey... On Monday, I'll watch Captain America. On Tuesday, I will go see Avengers Endgame. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to go see Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, uh, the, um, the uh, stars aligning to bring a lot of money into the box office for Avengers and for Disney in general. This, this is, I mean, the marketing's brilliant. I, I just looked at the calendar. I'm, I'm taking the third, fourth, and fifth off. Um, well, there you go. Third uh, Captain I, I, Marvel, fourth <laughs> Avengers. No, I mean we've, we've already we've already watched Captain Marvel like you know three times at yeah. home. Um, but like, um, I got it. I I'm gonna I'm gonna have to see this re-release of Endgame. Uh, I mean, doesn't matter if it's only seven minutes and a cutscene. I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's new stuff, and I can't wait. You know until what you know September whenever whenever the DVD comes out at this yeah. point. No, absolutely um, not. I will not. I refuse to wait, sir. I refuse. And then, I mean, who's who's not going to see Far From Home? Like, I I don't know. There's not nobody at all. not going to see that movie. I'll give you three negatives there. And I will say this: if you need just a little thing to spice things up when you're when you're going into your Marvel movie binge over these next two weeks, I've got something for you, Josh. Because oh. I don't know if you saw this, but there is a new web app that brings Marvel movies into their logical endpoint, according to this headline. Shut up. There's a literal Marvel Bible that someone put together. Shut up. And what this essentially means is someone took all of the scripts 
every single line from all of these movies, put it in a, I would, I can only describe it as a compendium and has made it searchable by verse slash chapter. Each movie is a chapter and the time and minute stamp. So you can see what movie a line is from and what time it takes place. So Josh, do you have the link up in front of you? I do. I want you to go ahead and uh, I mean, on that link in the article, you you want to click on the literal Bible thing? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna search a verse. And search I'm a gonna, verse. I'm gonna say I am Iron Man. There you go. What do you see? Uh, Iron Man uh, one, uh, one hundred seventeen minutes twelve seconds. Um. He says it in Iron Man 2 at 1 minute 22 seconds. Yep. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. Iron Man 2, 1207. And Iron Man 3, 11936. So they don't have Endgame cataloged here. They don't have Endgame cataloged yet. But, I mean, I'm sure this guy had to watch the, the this movie a couple This is unbelievable. Times. I typed in the word cave. And my favorite quote came up. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave. Yes. With a box of scraps. Box from- of scraps. From the Book of Iron Man, Chapter One, uh, it's ninety five thirty two. So I, and, I like I like how he has it. Like yeah, like it's, it it's looks set up like, like a, a Bible. Bible verse. Yeah, One Iron Man ninety five thirty two. That I is just unbelievable. thought it was fun. I think it is, it, and it's the funny thing is if you click on your verse, then it'll pop up. So if I click on Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with box of scraps, I could see everything before and after now. So the next I line understood. is, well, I'm not Tony Stark. I understood that reference. One Avengers 5549. <laughs> I just, I, and all I did was I put in the word reference. Yep. Okay. Oh, Very wait, easy to search. Wait, second, I do not want a, another single pop culture reference. Three Avengers 7902. This is <laughs> fantastic. How cool is this? This is amazing. So just some, something you can have a little fun with next time you're having a Marvel movie marathon. It does go all the way up to Captain Marvel last time I checked. That man is playing Galaga. One Avengers 5419. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, so it, it does include Captain Marvel. I just typed in uh, Supreme just to see if I can get some Supreme Intelligence. Uh, and I did, in fact, get those quotes. Uh, What the Supreme Intelligent really looks like. Captain Marvel 343. Um, So, yeah. So you got everything, obviously not including Endgame, not including Far From Home. I'm sure this is going to be updated with those things. You can access it on your phone. You can access it on a web browser. (laughs) It's it's a very cool little little website slash app. What are you laughing at? I typed in Smash, right? Yeah. Uh, And obviously you've got the, you know, one Avengers 11309. You've got the Hulk smash line. But mm-hmm. <laughs> three Thor eighty one thirty one smash smash smash. This just <laughs> is cracking me up over here. Sorry. No, that's good. That's good. All right. So while you're in the movie theater enjoying, you know, looking up some verses, you know, you're going to be using some of your tech, obviously. And CJ wasn't here to search the news. To get our tech perspective. So you know who had to do it, Josh? You had to do it. I had to do it. And you know what I learned? I don't give a shit about tech. (laughs) But what I did find was a couple things that I found a little bit interesting that I'm sure you have some thoughts on. So, Josh, let me ask you for your tech perspective on a couple things, okay? Yes, sir. So you remember back in the day. It was was Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. On Wednesdays, we wear pink, and we were wearing pink, as I'm sure you know. That's right. Um, and we were speaking about this wonderful new game that was coming out. It was going to come to our phones. It was called Pokemon Go. Do you remember this conversation? We were so excited that I spent $100 on the show. Cha-ching. You and me both. I was so excited as well. I played it really hard for a couple months. and then, Me you too. Know, we got, we got, we got uh, some enjoyment out of it. So I'm not, I'm not ever regretting yeah, downloading some. it. Yeah, right? I got some. Yeah, sure. But then we heard... They're going to do a, a similar game, but with your fandom, Josh, with Harry Potter. Yeah. And I know you felt a certain way about that. I did. It released this week. I Literally, did. no one freaking knew it was happening. There was no real trailer or anything besides the trailer we talked about a month ago. All of a sudden, I opened up my news app one day and it's like, hey, 
Harry Potter Wizards Unite is available to download on iOS. First, they lied to me and told me it was coming out on Friday. (laughs) Then on Thursday, they said, nope, just kidding, today. (laughs) So I downloaded it. Have Have you downloaded it? No, and I won't. All right. So, Josh. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what this game is like. As someone who does not give a shit about the fandom. Are you throwing pokeballs at Harry Potter? You're not. So it's it's confusing to me. Maybe you as a Harry Potter fan can help me. So just like Pokemon Go, uh-huh. you got your little character. He, he kind of walks around the real world, quote unquote, and you do catch things in the in the terms of you cast spells to find these confoundables, they call them. Um, I just found a fire-breathing chicken confoundable, apparently. That's fighting with a lynx of some sort. It's okay. okay. The threat level is low. And then you draw the spell in front of you to catch it. So instead of just like a pokeball you kind of throw, you, you, you do you like a Wingardium Leviosa. Right. And then it does a Bublio is the spell that I, I just cast apparently on this chicken. Uh, this mother effort just resisted me. Um, I don't think so, sir. Um, and that's kind of you catch like catching a Pokemon. You've caught the confoundable. You add it to your list of things that the ministry is keeping eyes on. And it's legit just Pokemon Go. Right. With Harry Potter. And that's, you get to and choose a house. Problem. Yay. You get to. <laughs> You get to collect food to up your spell casting power. Okay. Like, that's fine, but like that's not that's not what Harry Potter was about. That's not what right. any of the movie like if it if it were a game where I could complete tasks in school or maybe even battle other students like in a sparring kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um you know, find things or uh, find ways to, to help a friend like with their task or something Mm -hmm. like that's, that makes a whole lot more sense to me than finding confoundables that, which isn't a thing. It's not even a thing. Right. Um, uh, You know, it's like, stay off the dirigible plums. I get they're (laughs) floating, but like, you know, uh, all right, I won't step on them, but like that confoundables aren't a thing. So, what, why, why do I care? Like, why, why is that even, a, why is that? Uh, so I'm not going to do it because it's a bastardization of the story and the characters that I love. I, I got to tell you, I'm, I, I played it. I played it for the past day and a half because it just dropped yesterday. Um, this concept just made so much more sense with Pokemon. Well, cause you're just throwing a Pokeball. I will absolutely go and catch Pokemon. And that, yeah. that is the concept of the game to your point. What's a confoundable. This doesn't play with what the concept or what, what Harry Potter was about. Harry Potter wasn't catching things it, 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 like until the end when he was searching for Horcruxes. But like, even right. then, like he had to complete tasks. He had to, interact with the world he wasn't just casting a spell and oh here it is like you know oh accio horcrux no that never works Mm -hmm. accio never works (laughs) um but like i i I, what i will say is this i haven't played it long enough i don't know if battling and trading of your confoundables is allowed i don't know how that works um what does it matter well, I'm, I'm assuming they have some sort of system in place for that because they have it for pokemon go what's the end game Yes. I don't know. I mean, that's my real problem here. It's like what if I'm in at least like, with Pokemon, my goal is I want to catch them all. I know and what the goal is for Pokemon, catch. right? I need to I need I not only need to catch them, I need to develop them. Right. I need to evolve them. There is no such system that I've seen in place so far. I am only level three. So here's what I'm gonna do for Josh, for you, and for the listeners. I will continue to play this just to see what kind of things I unlock at around like level seven and nine or something like that. It's already pissing me off. But I got to tell you, just on the face of it, like the concept itself makes no sense to me. It just it just doesn't work no, in this kind of style. Because what's the goal? I don't I could not tell you. I mean, we 
you've seen all the Harry Potter movies, right? I have indeed. Okay. What was the goal? To defeat he who shall not be named. That's right. To defeat Voldemort. That's the goal. You said his name. Damn right. Because I'm not scared of saying his name. But that was the goal, right? Not and and not just not just defeat Voldemort, but like to watch the relationships develop and to watch how they each contributed to the other's success. So like you would think an app based game that was based on Harry Potter, you would form teams. You would have a Gryffindor team and a Ravenclaw team and a Hufflepuff team and a Slytherin team. And then and then you would work you would you would work together to complete tasks, not to catch confoundables. What I will say is this. I, some of this stuff, it's still very early on. Some of this stuff could be available when I unlock level 40. I'm probably not going to play that long. If you had an AR game that was Harry Potter that took place on the streets, mm-hmm. like, like, like Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. okay? But, like, but it wasn't about confoundables, right? It was about, it was about teaming up. Sure. And it was about completing tasks. Right. So like, yeah, maybe you'd have to find something and battle it or maybe you'd have to find, you know, I'd have to find a mandrake and and pull it out. You know what I mean? Like shit like that. Like, right. Stay true to the story. Stay true to the characters. You know, don't make me some just rando. Oh, I'm I'm Linus. I'm here. (laughs) Like, that's not a thing. Like, I want to be I want to be one of the characters. I want to be in a house. Right. that, you want to have that feeling of camaraderie, like that. That's kind of it. Stuff. That okay. like that's what a, that's what a game like this should be. Like even even now, they've evo- Niantic has evolved Pokemon Go to where it's way more social. Yeah, it absolutely is. But they did the exact same fucking thing with this, where they just started like ground zero, like they haven't learned anything. And and that's my biggest complaint is that it feels like like as and I if. I would still play Pokemon Go if it weren't for the fact that, like, it takes so long it's to ridiculous. get to the things yeah. that I want to do. And they're just doing it all over again just with a wizard overlay. I got a buddy at work who's still playing hardcore. Yeah. Like, I know he's, got some, he's got some sick, sick Pokemon. Yeah, and I'm jealous. I, I, I would love to have him give me some. Not trade. Just give me. Um, but I do, I, I do have some good news in the world of app-based gaming. Were you a fan of Dr. Mario, Josh? Oh, I was amazing at Dr. Mario. Well, Dr. Mario is uh, actually now coming to your iOS and Android device on July 10th. Mm. Come on. How is this a, how is this a mm, moment? Is this the Josh shits on everything episode? Is no. that what this is? Let me, let me I'm, I'm going to pose Enjoy one question. Enjoy my que- tech. I'm going to pose one question to you. Yes. Dr. Mario was like Tetris on steroids. Correct. Okay. How easy is it to play Tetris without a tactile interface? It's it's not easy. Not I'm, easy. It's not, but it's doable. Okay. Now, put that on steroids, Dr. Mario. I mean, the, the speed escalated way faster than Tetris. Mm-hmm. There were more variables than Tetris and more obstacles than Tetris. Mm-hmm. And I'm supposed to do that without a D pad and a button. Like kind of difficult. Uh, well, so the way the, th- the thing is, it's, it's not a D pad and a, um, button. You actually drag the pills onto the screen. Can so, I f- can I flip them with my finger? Or you don't there... have to flip them. You actually no no move no them. What no? Whoa mm. no no no. You, you absolutely have to flip them. You tap it to flip, but you drag it. So like the left and right, the D pad stuff, you drag with your finger. Okay, and then you tap it to flip. Does this all make sense? It makes sense. I just I, like. I'm really good at Dr. Mario. I think it's an easier way to play it in this version, in this way. Uh, Well, I'm going to get it for sure. When's it available? July 10th. Okay. I'm I'm putting on my calendar. Put it on your calendar. I'm I'm going to get it. I've been asking for Nintendo games on iOS since, like, 
episode two of this podcast. Yeah, and since so, then we've gotten Mario Run. We've gotten yeah, but uh, Mario Run is an Nintendo an Animal game. Crossing game. We got a Fire Emblem game, which you I know you don't play. So this is the next big game that I know you're huge. going to play. This is huge, and it, it makes sense to put it on a phone platform. This game is made to be played on the phone. <clears throat> All right. I mean, I'll, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give an honest try. I'm just. I'm leery. Okay, you have every right to be leery. Um, I have some questions for you, Josh. Yeah, because you're actually the Apple Apple nerd in here, and I, I'm not. Yeah. So, Apple TV is adding picture to picture, picture in picture mode to the Apple TV app and the Apple TV box. As an Apple user. You have well, like all of your movies through iTunes. You yep. use a lot of your apps through the Apple TV and Apple Everything. smart devices. Everything. Is this something that you would use? Well, the only application that I could think of that I would like to use is... Um, so the kids and I, almost every night we play chess, right? And generally, I'll just put music on, you know, Apple Music on the Apple TV. Um, sure. But some nights, uh, the Yankees are on, right? So if I could play Apple Music in a in a picture in picture on the sound bar while also watching the Yankees on mute, that would be super helpful. Because um, like right now, you know, the Yankees are on the TV on mute, and the music is coming from the HomePod in the other room, which is fine. I mean, it still sounds great, but whatever. Like, so this feature is interesting to me in that if I can execute, say, music in picture in picture while something else is playing on TV on mute, yes. But like, it reads to me like it's, you're going to be able to browse and stuff. So, but like right not, now, it doesn't, it doesn't see, it doesn't say you'll be able to, watch two things so for right now it seems like it's just in the apple tv app itself so i'll paint you this this scenario which i think you might actually identify with you start watching a movie you get 20 minutes in and you're feeling i don't know if i'm feeling this movie just yet i don't know if you've ever run into this situation josh (laughs) oh all the time but then you might think i might want to change my movie this would be a good option for you to have picture in picture in the smaller screen, I'm still going to watch this movie while I browse for another movie. And now I found the other movie. Now I'm going to watch that. And that's going to be on the bigger screen. Now that's the only kind of way I can think of how to use this. What happens with the smaller screen when I put something else on the bigger? Well, you know how, um, your iPad does picture to picture. I can make you very tiny on my iPad. I can split the screen. You can split the screen, but you can also take a video Minimize it to the a corner of your screen, picture in picture mode almost. Browse through another app, answer some messages and stuff. Then you can make that bigger and yeah, now. Yeah, but that's just that's that just app. a function of of iTunes. But that's what I'm saying. That that's how how it would work though. You would essentially go to the smaller window, maximize it. The other bigger window would disappear, and now you're watching something different. I wanted to put two things on the screen at once. That's that's what I'm saying, and like that's my what MLB, I'm like my MLB app does. I can I can have I can have two games on side by side and just choose which audio I want to hear. That's what I'm hoping this becomes. I'm hoping this becomes a hey, I'm watching this show on Netflix right now, but I'm not really into it. Let me queue up something on Hulu or in iTunes or on Amazon Prime, and I'm gonna hit that. While still maybe wrapping up whatever I'm watching in Netflix. Type you know thing. what would be fantastic? What would be fantastic? Is the next Apple TV has a pass through and I can run a true split screen, say a video game system on half the screen. And- oh, that's my dream is to be able to watch Netflix while playing video games. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, I can I can I can play I can play football or baseball on mute. Come on. Like if it had a pass through and could work that way. Did we just invent something? I think we just invented something to answer your question. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. In, inventing things. That's kind of what we do, right? Yeah. You know, we, we say them and it, it comes into existence half the time. Before we wrap up the Apple topic, I, I do want to point, I, I want to point out that uh, I 
upgraded to uh, iOS 13 beta 2 the other night. Yeah, okay. Not uh, it is so slick. It is so slick. Um so there's a, a there's a few things and there's one thing I can't stop doing is is it it create it automatically creates stickers out of your memoji. Okay. So any any memoji you have created and I do. I you know, I've I've one of myself, Laura, Zoe, Christian. Um it creates stickers for all of them and that's unbelievably fantastic. Yeah. But dark mode is unbelievable. And then <clears throat> so like I I said it's slick and it's super intuitive and I'm and I'm starting to learn how to use it better. But there's so many new things and and so many things that have sort of been rerouted or relocated and not in a not in an inconvenient way. It's reducing your clicks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, if I want to share something with you, Brian, I would click the share button. And instead of it just bringing up that dialogue where it's like, do you want to share it via message or this or that? Right. It, so it has that, right? But above it, it has like all my recent contacts and you're always in my recent contacts. Oh, nice. So you just hit so it So it's goes. it's literally two clicks. It's click, click, done. Nice. Set. Okay. It's super easy. And that's that's not just like, it's not just Safari. Or, it's for every single app. It's It's completely native. It works brilliantly. Um, it's it's really great. There's a bunch of other stuff. I, like, I haven't gotten into all of it, and I'm not going to give uh, the listeners... I can't give you a full update, because A, you would be bored to tears, and, and B, Brian would fall asleep. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you're feeling adventurous, when the public beta comes out, check it out. I haven't had my phone restart once. There's been no battery issues. There's been there's been I mean no issues of any kind with 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 this beta two which will be the the first public beta, um, it's really great. You should check it out and it works really well with the Apple TV as well, which was not the case with iOS twelve. the 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 latest iOS twelve build um, update completely screwed the the remote app. It was awful, and this has completely fixed it. When is uh when is it available for us peasants? Do Soon. You know? I Soon? mean, got li listeners, I I've got like I've got a I've got dev access. So like if you really want it badly, just hit me up privately and I'll I'll hook you up. There you have it. I uh I am of the mindset that I I just wait until they officially release it because I am a peasant. Um, but I, I do get your Memoji stickers. They are How great are they? They are quite wonderful. Don't um, they look just like me? More Just more ways for me to see your face, which is great. <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so listeners, uh, that is all I found for Tech Perspective. There was more. It was boring. And we're going to get past it. Like Lenovo's making a foldable computer. I feel like we talked about this. A foldable it's, it's screen computer. It's gonna break. Okay, what the good. hell is that? I don't know. Foldable um, computer. It's called a laptop. I fold it all the time. Yeah, there you go. Before we get into the next topic, we just want to say that your support of this show is what keeps us going every week. So would you kindly please share this episode with a friend, especially if you think they'll enjoy the topics we just discussed. And if this is your first time listening, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Thank you. All right. So on to the next topic. Um, so last week we didn't get to talk a lot about this, this segment. So I would like to spend a little time going from screen to stream. And the first thing that I want to talk about, uh, we got a trailer, the first trailer for Dr. Sleep. Now, Josh, uh -huh. I know you're not a huge horror fan. No, I watched the trailer. Have you seen The Shining? Of course I've seen The Shining. I'm just making sure. And you watched this trailer. Shining. And then you watched this trailer. So what were your thoughts on this trailer? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to watch it. You're not. You're not good with. I look, what, I, I watched. I watched The Shining uh, when I was a little kid. I don't know. Seven, eight years old. Um, back then I used to love all this shit. So like, like a I, month I mean, after you saw the exorcist, I'm guessing. No, the exorcist, I was five. Uh, I, no, I can't do, I can't do demon. I mean, even <laughs> Constantine is a little scary. Okay. Um, but 
I watched a ton of horror. Like I watched all, all, all the you know nightmares on Elm Street, all the Fridays the Thirteenth, all the Halloween movies. Uh, for a second, um, I thought you were talking about Friday next Friday and the Friday after next. No, I thought I do love those. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> um, but um, I saw the, sh- the the Shinning when I was super young. Um, I-, I didn't find it terrifying then. Um, but then I watched this trailer and I went, nope. This, uh, this definitely looks intense. Yeah. I, I recently gotten more and more into horror and I'm blaming my fiance for that. Um, and like just one, this past Halloween, we just watched a bunch of horror movies. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to keep this train riding. So I've been like consuming a lot of horror movies recently. And I, this, this looks intense. I'm completely on board. Hugh McGregor is great in everything. mostly everything he does. Everything all the time. Um, I'm interested. Uh, if you are interested or if you're a fan of horror or if you're a fan... I mean, it is based off of a Stephen King book. Stephen King actually wrote a sequel to The Shining called Dr. Yeah. Sleep. Yeah. Um, it's been, what, 30 years since the first Shining came out? That's More. Like, and that's the redeeming factor is that it is Stephen King and, and the, the, the man can really do no wrong, um, which, you know, likely means it's just going to be a really, really intense thriller. It's not horror. We can both say it's not horror. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen King... I mean, a lot of his stuff is straight horror, but I mean, stuff not, like The no, Shining. Not, not a lot of his stuff is horror. I mean, I would, I, I personally classify it more as, to your point, thrillers. Like, yeah, even it, I, I really wouldn't classify as a straight it's not, horror movie. It's, it's not horror. It's yeah. not. It's a. It's more. It's more of. It's more of an intense but psychological it is, thriller. It is definitely just like edge of your seat type of absolutely heart writing pounding and, yeah, and storytelling which, which is, that he does. Right. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Um, and you know, the same thing with Firestarter and Carrie and Cujo and and like, I've, I've read these books, um, and I, you know, okay, I I can create a picture in my mind and, 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 and be, and be thrilled while reading. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did read those books when I was younger. Um, but like, I don't know, man, S- sitting through it in, in a theater full of people, I don't think I could do like this. Maybe this is something I watch on my own, like on my laptop in a hotel room. Brightly lit during the day. Yeah, like not. Uh, no, I mean, at night, but like, you know, in a place where like I know the door is not only dead bolted, but also latched. You're on like the sixth floor. Nothing can get to yeah, you. Yeah, there's nobody can get to me. I'm gotcha. not scared about anything. There's no house noise. Like even house noises during something like that. Yeah. Even like my house settling, I'm gonna start swinging at something, and I don't. I don't want to. Like I don't want to like break a lamp or. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I, I feel you. Well, I mean, it is getting released in theaters November eighth. So fresh after Halloween, you can. Maybe uh, see nope. it as a. I'm as not. A, I'm not. I'm not going to a theater to see this movie. I I will be at the theater seeing this. I'm sure we'll revisit this once we get some more news or once we get closer to November. And I do certainly the in the blockbuster. Yeah, it most certainly will be in the blockbuster. So that's really only the the big movie news that we got. I came across an interesting article this week, though, Josh. Do you remember? A couple weeks, uh, not a couple weeks, maybe a couple months ago, we did our favorite segment. We did cast this. Yep. Right. And we cast this on Back to School. I love Back to School. Love and it so much. We, we both enjoy this great, great movie. Rodney Dangerfield um, goes into college, back to school, hence the title. Triple Lindy. With his son, right? Um, they're turning that into a reality show. Come again? So Rodney Dangerfield's back to school is becoming a reality TV show. Essentially, what we're doing is we're having parents move in with their kids and go to college with them, just like the uh, the movie back to school. They're calling it a docu series. I'm calling it reality show. OK, unless every single parent has a Burt Young I disqualify this premise. I disqualify all reality shows slash docu series slash labradoodles. And, and 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 unless there is 
a Sam Kinison professor, I also disqualify. And there's not going to be because in 2019, you can't have a Sam Kinison professor. This this show is only going to be just a bunch of college kids being like, oh, God, why is my oh, parent? Why is my oh, dad my gosh, here? I hate you. Like, why? You're so embarrassing. Like, it, that's all it's going to be. And you know what? Who thinks this is a good idea? Like, I, l- listeners, I'm not sure how many of you have seen Back to School. And if you haven't, fucking shame on you. Uh, because Robert Downey Jr., amazing performance. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a really, really solid movie. Not And not, not just like a, a cheesy coming of age thing. It was coming of age, but like it was for both father and son. And then you had, you know, sort of the comedy with the Rodney Dangerfield, but you had like the, the like the, the hopeful, like the, the inspirational athletic moment with the triple Lindy. And you had Sam Kinison getting in everybody's face and you had Rodney Dangerfield falling in love as well as his son falling in love. It was just a great, like on a bunch of levels, it was a really solid movie. And for, for being really what it was, which is a, a cheesy eighties flick, right? Yeah. It, it was, it was really a great movie. It's something I can watch every single time it's on. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Hey, maybe, maybe you can do a little like, Marathon, watch back to school, and then maybe watch this series, Josh. I, I, I don't know. I, I think this is a terrible wh- idea. Where is it going to be aired? Um, that is a great question. A question you would think I would have the answer to. Like, I don't see it anywhere in the article. There is nothing in the article saying where this is going to be airing, when it's going to be airing. I have no idea. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, it, All right, so here's what I'll say. If it's on a streaming service that I currently subscribe to, I'll I'll give episode one a watch. Mm-hmm. And out of out of respect for how amazing the movie was. The only thing I can find here is that MGM Television is going to be producing it and distributing it, but nowhere as as far as what network is going to pick it up or a streaming service is going to pick it up and actually show it. So why don't we all just watch the movie? I, I think we should all should just watch the movie. I think we should all watch the movie three times and you will be much better off for it. I'm going to go to iTunes and buy the movie right now. <laughs> all right. You've bought three things on this podcast so far. I don't even, I don't even care. You're giving me so many good ideas. <laughs> oh, I already own it. Ah! Oh, perfect. Uh, so speaking of good ideas, uh, I think it's time to cast this. Uh, so listeners, last week I put it out to you guys. We had, uh, two choices to cast and it was either the Adams family or the fifth element. Um, I then realized after dropping the episode that I do not have access to see who voted. So, well, not only that, (laughs) um, but I also sent you a text saying, fuck the Adams family. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which was your idea, by the way. It was my idea, and I am allowed to poo-poo my own ideas. I really hope there was nobody out there who was really hoping we would recast that, because we are going to go with the fifth element. And when we're talking about the fifth element, we're talking about, what, five main characters, right? Yeah. Got Corbin Dallas, who's played by uh, Bruce Willis in the original movie. Lilu, played by Mila Jovovich. Zorg was being played by Gary Oldman. Cornelius is played by Ian Holmes and Ruby Rod is played by Chris Tucker in the original movie. So that's right. If you do not remember the rules to cast this, we are going to imagine we are making our own movie in today, the 2019s, which honestly, that's like actually now 20 years since the fifth elements came out, by the way, made me feel old. Um, (laughs) So, I mean, this is ripe for a remake, I guess. Yeah, and uh, if they were going to remake, and it we now, are, and we are the we right cast? two guys to get it done. We are, we are. You know what? We really are. We have so many good ideas. <laughs> now, Josh, we don't have a moderator in CJ. We don't have any. Point no, we're just going to have to debate this out. We are truly going to have to hash it out, and and one of us is going to have to secede as to who has the better pick. Agreed. So. I think we should start with the meat popsicle himself. I think we start with Corbin Dallas. We work down the line. <laughs> Sound good to you? 
Sounds good to me. All right. So we're going to do this back and forth, Josh. I'm going to let you go first, and then I'll give you my pick, vice versa. There's not going to be any clear winner. Cool. Um, but we will, at the end, assemble our cast of, ca- of The Fifth Element. For Corbin Dallas, who did you choose? Okay. So <laughs> my 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 casting is, is normally a process, and I, I need someone to tell me that I'm being stupid. Um, and, and normally, um, my lady wife, Laura is, uh, happy to tell me I'm being stupid. So I went to her with two options. My first choice was Idris Elba. My second choice was better. So I'm going Chris Pine for Corbin Dallas. Okay. You're going Chris Pine. Can I, can I get a little, uh, why Chris Pine? I, I, so the thing, the thing that when I really started thinking about Idris Elba is that he does he does gruff really well, but he doesn't do zingers really well. And okay. Chris Pine, his timing's impeccable. Um, just the work he did as Captain Kirk in those little one-liners, those zingers, those tongue-in-cheek things. Uh, it's totally Corbin Dallas. He's a great action star, you know, and he he's he's the right sort of age group um, for Corbin Dallas. And you can you can picture him as a guy who's basically just screwed up a whole bunch of stuff and, and now has to redeem himself. He's played a secret agent and played Jack Ryan. Mm -hmm. He's handy with a weapon, knows how to fight, but like ultimately he can do flawed. He can do tough. He can do funny. He can do romantic. And I didn't see uh, Idris Elba with the Lee Lou I cast. Okay. I see where you're coming from, and I'm going to be more amiable this time because uh, I don't have a moderator, but I do think I have a better pick. All right, let's hear it. My pick for for Mr. Corbin Dallas is Carl Urban. Carl Urban, you know, as Bones right. from the Star Trek. I'm, I'm giving context for the listeners. Bones from the remake of Star Trek. He was in a show called Almost Human. He's Judge Dredd in the new Dredd. He's got the boys coming out on Amazon Prime. I see this guy as, to your point, he can play gruff. He can do the action. He can also do the comedy. He does a, he does a lot of little tongue-in-cheek moments in just Star Trek alone as yep. Bones. Yep. Uh, he's got the physicality to be able to pull off that role. I, I think he can do this. And I think he can, as much as I love Chris Pine, I think he's a better fit for Corbin Dallas. Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redirect, Your Honor. I went with the A-list guy, and you went with the B-list guy. I don't care about A-list or B-list. First off, tell me how Carl Urban puts more butts in seats than Chris Pine. I don't need... Or, 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 or how he's better for that. I don't need Corbin Dallas to put butts in seats. I've got okay, why a don't we do this? rod that will put butts in seats. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just stack them up you want to do then, the whole cast? Yeah, I, I think we're gonna have to do it holistically because this right. is this is gonna take a fucking day if we <laughs> if we do it this way. So like, let's just stack them up. All right, and then and then we'll go. This was okay based on the casting. This 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 this. All right, so I've got your Corbin Dallas as Chris Pine. So who was your Lilu Lilu uh, Dallas Multipass? Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. Okay. I'm not going to have you break down each actor. I'm just going to have you break down your cast holistically then, okay? Yep. Uh, who is your villain, Zorg? Ben Mendelsohn. Was that yours too? I have Ben Mendelsohn too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, your Cornelius. Ricky Gervais. Okay. All right. And your Ruby Rod? Billy fucking Eichner. I'm just typing in Billy Eichner, not Billy fucking Eichner. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you my entire cast and then we're just going to have to duke it out and we're going to have yep. to maybe combine cast and pick and yep. choose. Yep. So I have Carl Urban as my Corbin Dallas. Okay. My Lilu, Lilu Dallas multi-pass. I have Karen Gillian. Oh. Yeah. My Zorg, I have Ben Mendelsohn. Okay. We have the same guy. We have the same guy. So we can both agree on that one. Uh, Cornelius, I chose Gary Oldman because I'm, I'm fun like that. A little bit of fan service. We'll revisit. Okay. Yeah. My Ruby Rod I have as Donald Glover. 
AKA Childish Gambino. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't tell me to get out of here. That's an amazing pick for Ruby Rod. It's nowhere close to Billy Eichner. It's the, what is the difference between Billy? First off, Ruby Rod, why Billy Eichner for Ruby Rod? Here's why. Because Chris Tucker as Ruby Rod was basically a cartoon. Like, he was the walking embodiment of ridiculousness. And that is Billy Eichner. Uh huh. That's that's Donald Glover, too. It's not. It's not. It Donald absolutely Glover. is. Have like, you seen Community? Uh, no. You no, watch Community. The guy is a uh, absolute. Have cartoon. you seen Parks and Rec? I have. Of course, I've seen Parks and Rec. But you've seen Billy Eichner. I've seen Billy Eichner, and I get I get why you're saying that, but I don't. He does not. He We're going to disagree not. on Ruby Rod hard. We are disagreeing um, on Ruby Rod hard. I'm actually okay with your Cornelius. I'm obviously okay with your Zorg. I th- oh, I think Ricky Gervais would be amazing as as Cornelius. Yeah, and as much as I think it's really fun to have Gary Oldman come back and revisit the part, I will uh-huh. acquiesce and say Ricky Ricky Gervais. And really unfortunately, would. unfortunately, I have to automatically concede Karen Gillian. Yes, because. It's so good that it should have been my pick. <laughs> Fuck was that good. So really, I can't, I can't believe over, I didn't think of it. So really, when we when we take into account how, you know, all right. So Karen Gillian as our Lilu, Ben Mendelsohn yep. as our Zorg. For sure. And Ricky Gervais as our Cornelius. So, so far, yep. it's, a, it's a tie game in, in my yep. book. We are arguing over... Corbin Dallas and Ruby Rod. Given that cast that we have so far, I, I if think you're, Carl, if you're putting Karen Gillian out, th- Karen Gillian out there, I don't see how you don't put Chris Pine with her. Why you don't think? Why 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 do you have to put Chris Pine? You tell uh, me why I, you have because to. I think the chemistry is better. I th- I think I think he's a better fit for a romantic role than Carl Urban. But that movie is it's yes, there's a romantic part he to it. He fights just the same. Like you, you pick Bones over Kirk. I don't understand how you do that. I picked Bones because he he is he pulls off Gruff so much better. And when I think Bruce Willis, I don't think did you the see Hell or High Water? Men. I did not see Hell or High Water. Okay. No. All right. You know what? I will give you Chris Pine. Because of the hell or high, high water argument. I can't argue about Donald Glover because I've never seen Community. All I know. I will give you what I know about Billy Eichner. I will give you his entire career about child of Childish Gambino. Is there a third? Is there another option? Is there a third? Did you have somebody else in mind that you thought maybe? I that, honestly, no. Really? I thought Ruby Rod. I immediately thought Donald Glover. Jesus Christ. I did the exact same thing with Billy Eichner. Uh, there was, was the no only... backup. There was no, maybe I'll go with this guy. I, I, I think who can be over the top, who can be kind of cartoonish, who's got musical talent and who can pull off a skin tight. All right, I'm changing outfit. it to John Mulaney. I'm changing mine to John Mulaney. I'm you can you can agree. you can go you can go with Donald Glover. I'll retract, but I'm saying there's a third option that I think we could both agree on. You saw Peter Porker, Spider Ham. I think it's a good pick, and I think it's a compromise that we can settle on. I, you're really stuck on Donald Glover. I huh? really am stuck on Donald Glover. I uh, really, right. I, uh, look, I feel I'm, like this I'm gonna, is the line look, I draw. Uh, I gave get, you Chris Pine. I'm gonna, I'll give it to you. It's not going to, it's never going to be my pick, but I'll give it to you. If we're running this movie studio, we're going to have to make some compromises. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I mean, in, in order for this shit to get made, you and I are going to have to hash it out. And if it's going to take Donald Glover, then so be it. We'll go with Donald Glover. I'm, I, I, I'm going to take the win for the, for the Donald Glover. Great. I will. I, I so our cast. Together, we're casting a new version to cast this. We are going to have it star Chris Pine as Corbin Dallas, Karen Gillian as Lilu, Ben Mendelsohn as Zorg, Ricky Gervais as Cornelius, and Donald Glover as Ruby Rod. <laughs> it's a dead tie. 
It's a dead tie, but it's a solid <laughs> cast. It is a solid cast. It's really solid. Maybe we should cast the, the blue alien chick right now and see who <laughs> wins. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that Laura was like, make sure you sing. The, you, you cast the chick that sings. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. She's in 10 seconds. And then she gets a bullet in the gut. I, oh, but it's my. Oh, it's just it's a one great of my scene. favorite parts of the movie. It, it's a great scene because you you got that overlaid with Lilu kicking some ass in the oh, hotel room. Oh, it's so great. It's, it's fantastic. A- and it leads into a great scene with you know with him trying to get out of the hotel as well yeah and by the way uh if any of you listeners uh are still in the dark about the fifth element you haven't seen it uh, come on just what are you doing with your life right now you're making bad decisions go watch it <laughs> so that was a new way of doing cast this i kind of I kind of liked it. We, we well, I think I think without with without was, CJ here, we probably had to adapt. It was uh, a symbiosis. A, a new, it it, it yeah. worked out a little a little better than I thought. I thought we'd be arguing for an hour and a half about. Well, this. here's the thing: if if we had broken down every character, this show would be four hours long. Oh, most so, certainly, yeah. most certainly. I think I think this was the right approach. Well, I really hope that the listeners are very happy with our picks and our cast for Fifth Element. And if you want to see this movie made, uh, give us money. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, so anyway, I mean, is there anything else you would like to, to speak about tonight, Josh? <laughs> no, guys, thanks for sticking with us for for two uh, relatively unstructured weeks. Oh, completely um, unstructured. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I hope I you enjoyed it. I am not good at this. I, I hope you enjoyed uh, Brian and I going back and forth. We really appreciate you making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. Thank you for listening to That Kind of Nerds podcast, and we will see you next week. Well, welcome to the club because you are that kind of nerd. So did you, were you aware um, that, the, uh, that the title of, of last week was, was a Letterkenny reference? No. It's not aware. Okay, so here's the thing. Why I don't watch the show. I, Why would I no, know this? So here, what? So I said to Laura, like I went like, like and I, t- and I texted uh, Capilla too. I'm like, the title of the episode is going to be what could be so urgent. And Laura's like, yes. And I'm like, no. Here's why. I'm confused. She goes, what? You're confused? And I'm like, yeah. I said, what could be so urgent? And Brian said, and I quote, you'd have to be stopping a nuclear missile attack. And Laura turned to me and went, does, does he watch the show? And I go, I think he might low key watch the show. I do not. I well, swear to God. That is the exact scenario of what could be so urgent. <laughs> That is the wow. exact scenario of the story of what could be so urgent. And well, I was like, serendipitous. I was I, like, you said it. And I kind of went, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, has he, has he been screwing with me this whole time? <laughs> because that's the exact scenario of what could be so urgent. <laughs> so I, I, like, I, maybe I'm, I'm just that in tune with maybe, what maybe, the show's about. Apparently maybe you are. And, and like, you know, everybody I know who watches letter Kenny was all about the title of the episode and they love the reference. And it was that, so it was cool. Um, but you saying avoiding a nuclear missile attack perplexed me. Just all week, just like I could see you with like the red string across the room, be like, "Does he know how? How does he know?" <laughs> yeah, I had, yeah, I had red strings all across my entire house trying to connect the dots. <laughs> oh, now you know. I kind of like th- this makes me want to watch it low key, not tell you, and then just <laughs> drop little references here and there. Just to continue to screw uh, with you. You would be a very happy individual if you watch this show. I'm telling you. Oh, uh, I, I will see. We will see. <clears throat> All right. Let's uh, let's get this uh, good old wagon on the dusty trail. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Let's see it.